Hey Cyrus. How you doing, Chief? I'm not bad. Excellent. So today let's talk a little bit about what makes a good character. Sure. And then also how to develop him throughout the story. Sure, sure, sure. Excellent. So we've you've drawn a lot of different characters over your tenure um, yes. in comic books. Um, one of the most is interesting ones, in my opinion, is Captain China, mm -hmm. because he definitely has a really strong arc from beginning to end. Yes. He's pretty well defined by the end of the 12th book, mm -hmm. and I think you learned a lot about him throughout the entire story. Yes. So what... What process does it really have to go through to be able to create a strong character like that? Well, I think, first of all, your story has to be strong. Sure. You have to know, if your story is weak, it doesn't matter how good your character is. Your character is kind of wasted in the mm -hmm. process. So I think story is number one. Uh, I think number two, you've got to put enough conflict in there. Okay. You know, meaning conflict doesn't mean just character fighting. It means what are the scenarios that, is that the character has to kind of overcome. You know, and, and it's, it's a subject matter we can probably talk a little bit more in-depth you know, in another segment. So there's, there's story and conflict that you got to consider. Uh, but Captain China was a very unusual approach where um, I approach almost like the complete opposite of Captain America. Okay. Well, when you see a Captain America movie, you know, where uh, Chris Evans played the character, he was very clearly defined who he was from the very beginning. Sure. He was a guy who, who, you know, wanted to do something for his country. Uh, was not afraid to sacrifice himself. You know, there's the famous grenade scene where they threw a fake grenade and he jumped up on top of that. You knew that who that character was right away. Sure. No doubt. Captain China was the opposite approach where you kind of don't know what he's about until you reach the very end. You know, the process is almost like a reverse. Where at the beginning you think, okay, what is what does it really stand for? And none of that is made, made clear at all. But as the story progresses, you begin to see all the puzzles starts to come in. You know, his past... Some of the, the, the situation he was put in, you know, some of the loss he suffered. And then at the very end was the final defending moment to say, this is who I am. And mm -hmm. then the character comes out. All right. So that was one one the, the more unusual approach that, that I tried with the character. Um, but, but the trick to that was also surrounding him with characters that are a little bit more, more livelier. You know, you kind of know who they're about. So you kind of you kind of use that to... to prop him up a little bit. Right, and almost process. like a foil. I yeah, guess um, yeah, yeah like a foil. Thing. So you can kind of see, okay, what's going on. He's definitely not one of those, but what is it about? So that was kind of the trick in writing that. Um, so, uh, yes, you want to have a clear, but because Captain China had a very clearly defined story where I want to go with that, uh, and I know what the conflict was, it was easy to not have that shown very beginning because I know where the, the ultimate goal was going to be. Right. Um, as opposed to writing something like something high, where characters are very much almost one-dimensional cartoon characters. So you get their personality very quickly across, sometimes with dialogue, sometimes with their actions, and then you kind of go from there. Makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about um, anime, for example. Sure. I feel like Isekai are really popular right now. Yes. And more often than not, you're going to see a lot of different shows sort of copy the formula from mm -hmm. previous ones. Sure. So, more often than not, the protagonist will feel just like every other protagonist that you've seen. Yes. And you'll see the same exact situations and mm -hmm. everything. Yeah. Um, I feel like sometimes it's not just about hitting the same story beats that other places have done, but actually really clearly defining who your character is in this story. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes you can have a situation where... Um, you can give someone the same situation, sure. but they'll act differently yes. depending on you know the circumstances, um, where they are in the particular story, their age, all these other things yes. can definitely play into it. But if none of those things are considerations, even if um, you're taking a very popular mm -hmm. circumstance, the character can feel really um, hollow and sort of forced and uninteresting. Well, the thing with Isekai is, is almost every main character is a surrogate for the audience. Yes. That's really the approach to writing something like that. Um, I think what makes it good and not good is that uh, you have to think, okay, if, if you know, I himself is that character in the storyline going to a different world or different dimension or whatever, what would I do? And usually you can write really smart solutions for that character to solve is usually when you have a good character. Right. When you write the character really dumb to a point where the audience go, I would never do that. I think that's when you kind of lose them a little bit. Mm -hmm. So he's kind of a, a different approach to writing. You're writing the average guy, but the average person that you're writing about has to make smart choices in the process. Yes. And it's so frustrating that no one <laughs> would ever make that decision, or yes. it's so self-sabotage. Yes. That's when it gets a little frustrating. Yes, that happens too. So, so, but that's the trick to writing Isekai. Mm -hmm. 
I don't think it's difficult to write isekai, but I think you have to be very careful when you maneuver around some of those those obstacles. Sure. When absolutely. you put conflict in front of character, what would he do? Um, uh, and of course, it's a popular thing right now, uh, mainly because I think um, due to the rise of video games, yes. you know, you can easily project yourself into a character mm -hmm. that you play. That's where the dominant part of pop culture is right now. Also, uh, a lot of the isekai came about from the fact that um, uh, in Japan, you know, their the economy has kind of been a slump for almost two two generations now. Right. Not even two decades, two generations. So um, the people always felt like they, you know, a lot of them are highly educated, had to go to college, but they they get very minim, you know, these minimum paying job like work at a gas station or or a convenience store as right. clerk. So they feel like they never reached their full potential. So isekai kind of kind of you know pulls that out of the Japanese society of saying hey imagine you can put your skill and your knowledge to work and be somebody else if we were not trapped in the current situation and that's kind of where that genre develops that makes a lot of sense yeah but but that means the character for that is is very much the you have to think about how the audience mm -hmm. and that's how you develop characters for that yeah I guess a good way to put that would be the kind of story that you're putting your character in mm -hmm. will largely define the kind of story arcs that your character is going to have to go yes. through right so yes. you'll see like tropes in westerns or horror movies mm -hmm. action movies fun oh, yeah. so on and so forth sure all of those different types of characters that you tend to see mm -hmm. will be largely defined by you know the kind of um, story that you're telling yes and sometimes it can be subversive Mm -hmm. and that can even become a part of the trope or the oh, yeah. um, so stories as well. Sure, sure. But the, the other thing I will also say is you, you I think when you're writing any kind of material, you have to ultimately make your character likable. Sure. I think that's a trick. Um, I think quite often uh, when a character becomes very much hated is because uh, either the character make dumb decisions you know, and that became very apparent when you watched The Walking Dead. Yes. Where I remember, you know, there are certain characters that would that, that would do things each week in the audience. You go online, you read the reaction. They want that character dead right away. It's like, why is this guy dead? Why did they kill the other character? Um, I feel that too deeply. Yeah, actually. yeah it's, that happens. It's frustrating. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's interesting. It's like when you, because how you like a character is really based on how they, how they make decisions throughout mm -hmm. the story. How they deal with conflicts. You know, whether they, but you can write a character that avoids conflict and a complete coward. And do all of that and still make it likable. Yes. You know, uh, you can even say um, Gollum from Lord of the Ring is a very good example. Not a likable character at all. But there are some people who say, my God, that's actually one of my favorite characters from the story. Sure. Yeah. I think likable is sort of a hard term to understand. Mm -hmm. Because it doesn't mean that they have to be liked in the story. Yes. It just means that I feel that they have to have some kind of really strong plot. Sure. They have to sort of drive the plot in some shape, form, or fashion, mm -hmm. or be a great accessory to sure. the general story mm -hmm. in a way that's either believable or interesting. And yes. a great example of that would be the Joker. You yes. know, he's not a likable person if you no. actually met him. No, not at but all. But his charisma is just off the charts. Yes. And he steals the show. Mm -hmm. And that's why people care so much about that part of the story. Yeah, because just like everyone cares about having a good villain. In sure. The story. Well, because he he's the you know he's the conflict. Yes. To the hero that he has to overcome. Yes. But he creates a, a very good conflict for the hero. That's why people like the Joker. Mm -hmm. uh, and even in his own movie, he, he, he is presented as a, a sympathetic figure that you can understand. And you can see why he wants to do what he wants to do. Exactly. And, right. and, his, and he creates a conflict to the society that's kind of falling apart around him. Yes. So those are the ways you can write a character ultimately likable by even writing him as a complete villain who does despicable things. Um, and those are things I think when people approach writing have to really think it through. You have to think about, okay, who is it that I'm, I'm, I'm trying to define here? What are some of his ideals, some of his, some of his personalities, and how does it work with the general, with, yeah, the general setting, the yeah. background, you know, and, the, and where you want to go in the direction? great example of that again is what I've been watching you just recently you mm -hmm. know Daredevil yes um, in season two you get a chance to see the Punisher yes and they become a foil of each other because yes. the Punisher is very very capable of killing people yes. and very comfortable with it mm -hmm. but then Matt on the other hand Daredevil he feels very uncomfortable with the thought of killing people yes and he still wants to uphold the law mm -hmm. even though he recognizes that he's operating outside of it yes and so the, both of those characters are very strong and very interesting mm -hmm. and effective in their own ways yes and so seeing those two work together is, is, is exciting I thought it's, it was, oh yeah it's absolutely one of the best part I mean I, I remember there was a, a, a rooftop scene where the two characters are conversing 
about why they should kill somebody and why they should not kill somebody. Mm -hmm. that, and this is just dialogue. Yes. And, and it's one of the most interesting conflict ever presented. It was fantastic. Movie. Yeah, in the superhero genre. Yes. So, uh, but the thing is, the Punisher is a well-defined character. You know exactly who he is. Who is he, why he's doing what he's doing, and you have no... You don't know why he's going around killing people. I understand that. That's kind of stupid. You know who he is. You know why um, Daredevil Matt Murdock wants to save people and don't want him to die. He's clearly defined, too. Yes. So you have two clear character, you know, personality, ideology being defined. When they butt heads, it, it makes great, interesting, you know, conflict, story, um, you know, a storytelling um, devices. And also, um, just overall... Um, uh, you're kind of. You, I remember watching that. You kind of going. I'm not sure who I'm rooting for here because yes. both of them are right and they make sense. They make sense. Yes. Yeah. And that's one of the issues that I was running into near the end of the show mm -hmm. is that at times I'm just like, no, like you you've made this mistake too many times. Yes. At this point, you have to compromise yourself. Sure. But I think that was the proper emotion that they wanted to invoke sure. at one point. That. You have that own mm -hmm. struggle within you, yeah. and you have to sort of see if they can find a creative solution to their mm -hmm. issue. Yeah. So all of that's great. You know, I think um, character development can be really easy or really difficult, sure. depending on the kind of story you're writing. But well, that's it's creating, yeah, creating compelling story with compelling characters. Yes. That makes people want to you know, read more about these characters, see what they but do. In terms of creating old character, I will always say, um, you know, write from your experience. You know, don't write something that's so far removed. Um, and if you are doing that, do some research. Mm -hmm. For for example, I, I you know I'm not a journalist, but if I were suddenly writing about um, a, a character who's a journalist that goes around maybe to to a, a war zone, have to cover you know a, you know a conflict and battle, I would probably have to start looking to more stuff like that. Read right. a little bit about it. You know what what do these journalists do? You know what is how do they prepare themselves before they go in, and what are some of the common situations they put themselves in. And then from that, you can extrapolate and say, okay, this is kind of the personality they're like. Or do I want to write a smart, a guy who's really smart in, in, in taking care of some of these situations? Or do I want to write a guy who don't know what he's talking about, kind of get throw, dropped into it, and then has to learn the ropes in the process? Makes sense. Yeah. All of that is important considerations yeah. to make. Yeah. But a character really is a part of the story, even if it's, regardless of whether it's a character-driven story or mm -hmm. whether it's plot-driven. Yes. Both times still having good characters that serve the plot is yes. important. Yeah, which, which goes back to the very beginning is that you can have a good character, you have to have a good story. Yes. Have a good backdrop. Good supporting character that kind of props your character up mm -hmm. in the process. Uh, and, and there's a lot to consider. It's not like, because I remember in high school when we write comic books, it's much simpler. Okay, we know this one, we write this one character, we define him. Maybe he's a bounty hunter, he goes around, you know, hunting criminals or aliens or whatever. And then there's not much else beside that. Mm -hmm. You know, where does he go after he's, he's done with his work? You know, does he have any, you know, relationship, you know, that, that's baggages that weighs him down? Sure. Uh, you know, does he really enjoy doing his job or is he somebody who kind of become a little too, you know, felt like it's getting stale and weary and it's bringing him down? You don't really think that far, but I remember back then, he's like, okay, he's the best bounty hunter in the world. He, you know, he has the best car, you know, uh, you know, always has a smart line, one-liner like the old Schwarzenegger movies and but stuff we, like we that. we need those. I mean, honestly, yeah. I wish that would come back. Sure. But all of those things are definitely important. Oh, yeah. But it can be a little bit difficult to yeah. put all that together. Yeah, especially the fact that I think one of the biggest problems we're fighting is that there's more and more media produced yeah. every day, you know, in terms of new comic books, new TV shows, new movies. So almost everything you can kind of imagine in the sun is, is being mined. Mm. And, and they keep mining it more and more and more. So as a writer, to approach writing characters, you have to be even smarter about how you approach these things. Otherwise, you're going to get lost in the shuffle. Sure. It happens quite often. But I also feel like there's a lot more opportunities out there sure. to take other people's, re to reference other people's work and yes. to be able to learn from it. Yes, can build the top, top of what existed. Sure. Um, so it's it's not impossible. It's just that I think I think there's so much more competition out there mm -hmm. when, you, when you want to go present your own work, your own character, your own story, all these things. And there's a lot more to consider. What's also nice these days is we have also a lot more teaching, you know, tools out there. Like we're we making this video being one of them. You go on YouTube, there's plenty of other videos teaching you how to write, you know, and how to draw and all sorts of stuff. There's a lot of how to, you know, how to do a type of video. Out right, there. exactly. Yeah. And all of that's fantastic. Um, I think in general, though, a character has to serve the plot. And sure. it has to be appropriate for whatever story you're trying to mm -hmm. tell. You know? Yeah. Um, 
in general, the best kinds of characters are the ones that are able to do something that's unique to only them. You sure. Know, let's just say Star Wars, for example. Yes. Um, Han Solo is a great character. Yes. He's well-loved. Mm -hmm. You only know enough details about him in the original trilogy to be yes. able to get upon, across the point. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the best character development and um, developing scenes, yes. in my opinion, is the one where Han shoots first. Yes. He shoots first. Yes. By the way, <laughs> let's, not, let's not kid ourselves. Yes. He does. And ultimately, that clearly defines sort of who he is and sort of um, his background of sort yes. of how he deals with people. And I think that's great. Mm -hmm. uh, being able to have those kinds of scenes in a medium are important, I think, to be able yes. to define the character. But I also think uh, a bottom line to that is once you develop your character, can your character be very easily summarized with one or two sentences. Sure. You know, when you say Han Solo, um, captain of spaceship, you know, willing to shoot first, roguish, you know, kind of, you know, uh, kind of kind of maybe a ladies' man a little bit, you know, the way he's portrayed. They can say these few sentences and define who he is. Daredevil being one of them, you know, blind lawyer mm -hmm. that, that works as a vigilante at night that goes on a roof, rooftop, you know, able to fight crime in, despite, of, despite his disability. Yeah. Clear defined. Punisher is another one. Mm -hmm. Lost his family in a in a you know gang fight. Yeah. Goes out killing criminal, you know, um, to seek revenge. Yeah. For for society. Very clearly defined. Yeah. So can you define your character that way would be a, a you know, I guess a good indication of how good you've developed your character. Sure. And there are some characters that are ambiguous. Yes. But even ambiguous characters I feel should be, you know, you should be able to write about them by the end and sure. sort of understand who they are. Well, Wolverine being one of them. But Wolverine is not defined by his ambiguity. He's defined by his visuals. You know, a short, you know, violent character that has that can pop claws. Yes. You know, that can that can very violently fight his character, fight his opponents, and he has a healing factor that prevents him from from yeah. getting injured. But there, I define who Wolverine is without any any problem. If you hear that? Go, yeah, that's who he is. That's exactly who he is. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So all of that comes together. Um, I think that's a good. I think that's a good point for sure. now. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for watching, guys. Yeah, well, we'll talk some more about other stuff next time. Absolutely. See you later. See you.